What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in today. So today we are talking about the EV Charger Daytona and the Charger RT. Now, both these cars are coming out. They are officially going into production and they didn't keep all the same aspects. Uh, there's a lot of it that's changed. The front end is different. The rear end is slightly different. And however, it does look like they are keeping most of that interior spec. Um, they did keep the, the mood lighting that is reaction uh, or reacts rather to your uh, drive modes and the way that you're driving the vehicle. Apparently the more aggressive you drive the vehicle, the more that the lights react. It is going to be launched as a two-door coupe um, that will seat five people. Four-door model is gonna be coming out later on. My thoughts on it, I think, I think that I get very much 90s Charger vibes out of it. Um, you know, if anybody uh, remembers the old concept Charger, and I'll put a picture of it up, um, but if you look at that vehicle, the rear end and front end are very, very reminiscent. Um, you can see that they took calling cues from that one and from, uh, well, from that concept for both the 14 through 20 and the, uh, the new Daytona as well. The RT is coming out with 496 horsepower and I believe 460 pound-feet of torque. If I'm not right, I'll correct that here on the screen. Zero to 60 in 3.4 seconds. Um, now, that's pretty quick, and it's already got numbers above the standard RT now, which is 375 horsepower. But if you're a muscle guy, you're still at that point where, yeah, but it's electric. Where's the sound? Where's that feeling? Where's the connection to the car? I get that. 100% and I'm not sold on it at all now the scat pack version now that car is coming out with over 600 horsepower 670 horsepower that's crazy crazy power numbers and that car uh, is supposed to do a quarter mile in 11 seconds uh, from the factory now that's that's pretty quick. That's pretty pretty good coming from the factory. Again, Dodge is shooting for the stars. Now, later on, uh, they're also going to be releasing the twin turbo uh, hurricane motor. Now, a lot of guys are interested in that because that again is a typical engine, and it's not EV. Back and forth with the power on the uh, twin turbo. Not sure on the output numbers on that yet. Um, but that will come out later with the four-door version uh, EV as well. Um, and you can get a two-door in that or the four-door to my knowledge. The other EV, the Banshee. Now that platform is supposed to be launched later on and we don't have specific numbers on that yet, but it'll be, uh, you know, starting in the $60,000 range all the way up to 100,000. And uh, depending on the direct connection packages or what type of, you know, however it's gonna be equipped. There is a Maserati currently out that uses the same electric platform and that car produces 880 horsepower, I believe all the way up to 1200. Um, that car is staggeringly fast. Getting 880 horsepower right off the bat or even a thousand horsepower right off the bat in the Banshee is gonna set it completely apart from everything and the instantaneous torque is gonna make it a monster on the road. Here's the caveat because with the EVs and the hurricane motor coming out, I foresee an issue because they're estimating 317 miles of range with the RT and 260 miles of range with the Scat Pack. For every EV that I've ever read about or even talked about, that's been the biggest problem. Those ranges lasting. Now, Dodge is saying with their quick chargers, you can charge the vehicle in 28 minutes from 20 to 80%. And that's supposed to be pretty quick for that. And make it so that you don't have to be sitting around as long. Now at the end of the day, you still have to charge this vehicle. This is not a vehicle that you can take on a road trip. Long distances with V8 
the EV platform is not reliable for that reason alone. Now, this is where, again, the hurricane's going to shine because a lot of people are going to take that. You know, if you can put gasoline in the engine and stop at a gas station along the way, guess what? Your range is as long as your gas lasts. So, and you're not gonna be sitting there. Stradman did a video with the Hummer EV where he was coming back um, from where he was to Utah. And they got stranded three or four times coming back and trying to charge this vehicle and trying to get it to work. They just, it, it's not a reliable platform. Dodge is including, you know, some cool things here and there. They're doing the direct connection packages. Uh, they're making it so you can buy these different stages of, um, you know, power output where you can buy these packages, download them to the vehicle, the vehicle will then update and you now have more horsepower. They're also including their power shot feature, which is 40 extra horsepower available for 15 seconds. And this can be used an unlimited amount of times, but there's a 30 second delay in between all of that. Now, even Tim Kineska said, reliability and range and being environmentally friendly are one thing, but performance is their top, top, top priority. To me, the new Charger is, it, it for all intents and purposes, it is an RC car. <laughs> and I say that because the goal with that and the goal with these builds seems to be, it is to have the most fun in as much time as possible because those range numbers are only as good as the people are driving them. The more you put the power down, the more that you go after it, the more that you drive that car the way that they are supposed to be driven, the less range you're going to have. People right now buy Hellcats not based on gas mileage. They buy it based on smiles per gallon. And that's because these cars are meant to be driven fast, they're meant to be driven hard, they're loud. These are enthusiast vehicles. That being said, an EV version, can it be an enthusiast car? It, it to me, it can't be the reliability factors there, the reliability of being able to charge it and being able to take it where you need to go. I would not take an EV vehicle on a road trip. I just wouldn't. It would be, not a smart move and it would be something that i would worry would get us stuck quite frankly that being said to me that would also make me worry about you know uh car meets doing any type of drives uh, there's a lot of groups that take drives through canyons and everything else you, what happens if you take an ev through a canyon and you're like an hour into your drive and all of a sudden you have 30 miles of range left but the next charger is 110 miles away what you gonna do? <laughs> it remains to be seen what's gonna happen, and it remains to seen what that charger's gonna do, but the interior of the vehicle looks really nice. Um, I am liking the new high back seats that are in it. I'm liking the new design of the new charger, and I think it's gonna be something that we're all gonna have to wait and see what happens. Thank you guys for tuning in today, and um, I definitely look forward to seeing that charger come out and uh, you guys take care and I'll see you on the next one.